This week on Top Travel, Jeannie and Yanez are in Mauritius, where they get to walk with the king of the jungle before enjoying a fun Bollywood-style party. Then they're off to Mozambique and a colonial queen of a hotel and explore the train station where the movie Blood Diamond was filmed. They also visit the Iron House, designed by the man behind the Eiffel Tower, stumble upon a surprise celebration in Independence Square and shop up a storm in the local markets. Casilla Nature Park is situated on 14 hectares of land and it's home to over 1,500 birds, zebra, giant tortoises, lions and so many other animals. We have had the most incredible adventures through Africa. I mean, I, don't, I can't even remember how many amazing game drives we've been on. And so many times we've encountered the king of the jungle, the great African lion. But often when we see them, we're protected by the safety of our game vehicle. But in Mauritius, we've decided to uh, take a walk on the wild side. We got the opportunity to go and walk with and touch some incredible big lions at the Casella Safari Park. Now, this is an absolute privilege to be in such close proximity with the kings of the jungle. Oh, I want to play with these little cubs. They're so cute, oh. eh? Jeannie, come here, my darling. We have a problem. What? I'm not sure if they're going to let you go inside because I don't believe you're taller than 150. I'm way taller than that. I'm leggy. <laughs> 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 Oh my gosh, <laughs> she barely makes it. Do I make it? You are officially one metre, 52 centimetres. Well oh, done. Mate. You're safe. <laughs> I told you I was tall. If you have any common sense and you realise how strong a lion is, the king of the jungle, you'll know that being close to it is probably not the best idea. Even though they say that lions are tame, they're still wild animals and anything can happen. Oh, wow. They're incredible. They're actually white lions. Look how much lighter those ones are compared to the other darker ones running around. For me, it doesn't matter if they're in the wild or in captivity. They still look lethal to me, eh? Oh, definitely. Oof. They are beautiful. Unbelievable. Oh, guys, how them. are we doing? Yeah, Hi, good, Darren, good, good. How are you, how are you doing? Yeah. Looking for you guys. How are you doing? You ready for this? <laughs> yeah. uh, kind of. But okay. first, I want to know, Darren, I mean, Mauritius is known as Paradise Island. No poisonous snakes, no wild animals. Okay. So, what are these guys doing here? All right, so, um, you know, the real concept came from Graham Brister, the owner of the park here, and, you know, from his family in South Africa. All right, so what he wants to do is, you know, preserve those animals, they're orphans, and then we, we brought them here so that you guys, you know, people like your clients can enjoy those animals and see them in their, like, in a real life, not like in zoos. You know, we want people to make them to enjoy and at, at the same time breed those animals, okay? So why don't you guys come with me and get your life sign away, and then we're going to go inside and have some fun with them. All right, you want to do this? Right. Let's go, guys. The white lion is a rare colour mutation of the Kruger subspecies of the African lion and the earliest recorded sighting was in 1938 in the Timbavati region. The most important thing for me is that you guys don't run and you don't shout. That's the most important, right? They, they're really young, you've got babies, you've got a couple of lions inside around 10 of them and they're going to run off to you if you start running. That's a game for them, all right? So no running and no shouting and you see there's plenty of guys taking care of you inside. Please listen to what they say or well, I'm going to tell you uh, rules inside. That's very important, okay? And that thing needs to stay with you whatever you're doing, okay? This means this, all right? This is like something that is familiar to them. You keep it with you and then if they come in too close, you just have to put it a barrier between you and them. We were led into the lion's den and each of us had to have a staff. Not for protection, not because that little stick was going to save us or help us in any way should these lions want to turn on us. But in habituating these lions, they use the staff as a form of training so the lions know not to pass or come closer. 
The best thing about this whole experience is that you're actually the most in danger because you can only see what's happening through the lens. Look at the cuts. And I'm carrying a stick and you don't have a stick, so. <laughs> Look at the cuts. Oh, that is so cute. Look at how big their paw prints are. They're huge. Uh, it's a baby print. A fully good lion print is going to be like that. Really? Because like that's that. the size of my hand. Yeah, that's the size. That's a wow. baby. That's a baby. That's a small hand. That's a, that's a younger one. And you've got massive, a fully grown lion paw should be like our head. Really? Eh? The cubs were tiny. They were smaller than a, a medium-sized dog. Yet their paws, size of my hands. All right, so you can see over there our little line and then something behind there that's a white line, guys. All right, so we've got in Mauritius, we've been in total six of them. Don't know if you heard about it. It's really, really rare, right? People don't know exactly how many of them is there, but I think there would be around less than 500 of them, right? But that's the cheekiest one, that's my tata. All right, so can you see those two little babies, the cute, uh, two cute little girls over there? So they are the third litre born in Mauritius. They're together with their two brothers. All right, so you can you have uh, on the left-hand side, you've got Kulala and Matala over there, so you can see they're having fun together. I was nervous because the reality is these animals are highly unpredictable and incredibly dangerous. But, you know, that's, that's part of your brain thinking. The rest of me all thinks with my heart and with my eyes, and I just saw these gorgeous, beautiful, precious, cuddly animals. This is incredible. I just, you, you can't, you don't realize how dangerous they are. I just want to get on top of them and cuddle them and wrestle them. So when they're babies, okay, they've got the camouflage on them, they've got the skin which makes them resist the claws when they fight. Look at that, look at how elastic this thing wow. is. Wow. Okay. No, 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 no. Just wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. I'm gonna just roll her. <laughs> she's a little bit that's cool Allah. she's very playful okay so look at the skin try to grab it and pull it okay i know you're thinking about a, a handbag but <laughs> no wow. definitely not okay so this thing is 10 8 to 10 times thicker than our skin all right and you can really stretch that stretch. thing okay and claws like that all right but look like at how that. big these paws are oh, look at those claws man. <gasps> oh, claws. oh wow cool. okay a lion could probably kill you with one strike of its paw or one bite with its teeth. They are essentially wild animals. And with a wild animal, even with a tame wild animal, anything can go wrong. Oh my god. <laughs> You'll feel already that this is different. No more than this. Excuse me. <laughs> You'd think that seeing a white lion in the wild is is more powerful than, than seeing it in captivity. But if you get that close to a white lion and you can actually look into its eyes and see its features so clearly, it's the same thing. It's almost more powerful. Because you're standing next to something that's, you know, very scarce. Imagine having a little pet lion. Well, that's my dream anyway. So I was in my element. A lioness only has between one and three cubs in a year and these cubs will nurse until they're about three months old and then they start eating meat. I don't know quite what's in a lion's milk because these little things just grow so big and strong very quickly. Male lions can eat between 10 and 15 pounds of meat per day. That's power. You can understand why they're called the king of the jungle. You know, you grow up reading storybooks and watching movies featuring these big guys as the main characters, but you never actually think that when you're this close to them, how incredibly beautiful they are, that they can actually have you at a loss for words and take your breath away. Hi. Right, so tell me guys, you happy? Very Enjoy? happy. In love. So I think we're gonna give them a little bit of rest, let them, you know, have some fun on their own. And please, guys, let's let's thank the handlers, and then we just head through the thank door. Thank you, right? guys. Thanks a lot. Thank, uh, you, thank, thank you. you very much. From swimming with the dolphins, which I've never done before, to exploring Mauritius, which is quite beautiful, to having these close encounters with lions, we needed some tender, loving care and some relaxation. Madame, I will give you the fuller glass, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, how's yeah. that for service? Brilliant, you know, I can understand why so many South Africans and Europeans flock to Mauritius 
because this place is the ultimate when it comes to relaxation and beach holidays. The party don't stop when the sun sets. And Clamet, my dear, tonight is Bollywood night. That's my night. I've got to go get ready. Get ready, Ashwarya Rai. <laughs> <laughs> Bollywood is certainly one of my aspirations in life. I mean, if I can be in a Bollywood movie, that will probably be the highlight of my life. So the Bollywood evening to end off the night was definitely something that would whet my party appetite. The stay in Mauritius was amazing and just finished off perfectly, reminding me of one of my dreams, Bollywood. Even in Mauritius, every day is another adventure. Whether you doing a trapeze act you've never done, to relaxing at the pool, to ending the day off with one of these fantastic shows they do every, every evening at, at Club Med. It's always entertaining. It's beautiful. Mark Twain was famously quoted as saying, you get the idea that Mauritius was created before heaven, and then heaven simply copied Mauritius. Stay tuned, Jeannie and Yanez pack their bags once more and jet off to Mozambique, where they eat, play and rove their way through the sunny republic. Sitting on the east coast of Africa with the warm Indian Ocean lapping at its shore, Mozambique is a tourist's paradise. Full of historical hotspots and white sandy beaches, Yanez and Jeannie soon find out that the sunny country also serves up the freshest seafood, considered by many to be the best in the world. Uh, just to give you a geographical idea of, of what Mozambique looks like, it's long and it's thin and it's twice the size of the state of California. It's a country that's had a very turbulent history, similar to South Africa. It's been through civil wars, it's, it's fought a war of independence. In fact, during the War of Independence, it lasted 10 years and ended in 1975. Between 1.5 and 2 million people visit Mozambique each year. That provides about 37,000 jobs. Polana is one of those typical colonial hotels that belongs in a bygone era. If you step into the Polana Hotel, you step back in time, in that history of, of, of grandeur and luxury and opulence. It's got these rolling lawns, and water and marble are very important elements used in the Polana. There's beautiful marble floors everywhere you look, double volume ceilings, beautiful swimming pools, gorgeous fountains, and the spa for me was the pièce de résistance. Maputo is such a densely populated, it's almost rough on the edges. You'd never expect to find such a grand old dame in the middle of that city. I've travelled all over the world, I've stayed in some of the best hotels. Now, arriving in Maputo, I never expected to find a palace like this. Polana, uh, it's, it was a hotel built in 1922, so it has uh, 92 years old now. Uh, it's the uh, old lady, but in good shape, okay? <laughs> and the architect was Herbert Baker. And uh, it's a great property with a lot of history. And that's uh, where it starts the responsibility of all of us that work in this hotel. You know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If it wasn't for the Portuguese, the world as we know it would not be the same today. I mean, in the 15th century, it was the Portuguese who discovered Mozambique, led by the incredible Vasco da Gama. Right now, though, we're in Maputo, which is the capital city, used to be known as Lorenzo Marx, until Mozambique got independence in 1975. Now, I always thought of Mozambique being Portuguese-speaking, but it is. this country has over 30 different languages. <laughs> which is is a good thing because our Portuguese is very rusty. Now, this building behind us is the train station. We're here to meet our guide. And, oh, this is where Leonardo DiCaprio shot Blood Diamond. And I'll go anywhere where Leo goes. <laughs> Her number one man crush and, until you met me, right? So much has been said about the railway station. It really is a majestic piece of architecture. But there's also, uh, you know, different theories about who designed it. Uh, a lot of the locals say that it was designed by Gustav Eiffel, who designed the Eiffel Tower. But in actual fact, Gustav Eiffel never visited Mozambique. Hi. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, Edgar and Tini. Lovely to meet yeah, you. Nice, nice meeting to you too, guys. Yeah. Was this one of the very many buildings built by Gustav Eiffel? 
Yeah, everybody said that, uh, but the, the station was built in 1910 by Gustavo de Lima, a Portuguese architect. And the steel structure you can see here was uh, built in the Eiffel factory in Paris and they, they built bring by ship. So the railway line you can see here was initiated by Paul Kruger because it was very important. The station was important to South African economy and Mozambique economy. The majority of users is Mozambique miners who works in South Africa and they up and down every time. And also going to Zimbabwe and Malawi. Speaking about Gustav Eiffel, I believe there's an iron house that he built somewhere around here. Yes, just in the corner. Let's have a look, please. Let's check it out. The Iron House, a beautiful design, architecturally, designed by Gustav Eiffel in 1892. Perfect in every way, except that it has one very big design flaw. The entire house is made from steel. Edgar, this is the famous Iron House designed by Gustav Eiffel, but with weather as hot as this in Mozambique, it must be sweltering inside there. Yes, that's why the governor of Lawrence Marx uh, doesn't spend long time here, because it's terrible hot on, in the summer, and that time they didn't have air conditioner. So he didn't spend long time, so next day he changed his mind, it's gone. <laughs> so he only lasted one day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I lived in Mozambique, I'd actually start a business, and I'd start it right there in the Iron House. Bikram Yoga. It's the perfect thing for the Iron House, because I can guarantee you it gets that hot in there. Oh, getting hot just thinking about it. Our next stop was Independence Square, and Independence Square is kind of the heart of, of Maputo. There's this beautiful statue of the legendary Samora Michelle. We were expecting to just have, you know, a lazy Sunday afternoon stroll through there. We arrived there and the whole square was just alive. There was some kind of political celebration and everyone was going wild, dancing, singing. It was beautiful, loud music, incredibly festive. Obviously, we had to join in. I must say, I've never seen this type of dance before. Yeah. What, what type of dancing is this? It's uh, shikupu. Shikupu? Shikupu. But now there's two different types of ones. There's yeah. shikupu and there's something else. And mapiku. Mapiku. Yeah. It's quite a, it's, this is quite a crazy situation because we've come to Independence Square and we had no idea there was a gathering, a gathering happening here. Now, I believe that the reason they're having a gathering here today is to celebrate the success of a president that's been ruling for the past 10 years. Yes, uh, that's why you can see people around here and uh, all these people, they believe that Frelimo is always in power, is what is Frelimo is the partner who is doing and who is going to do in the future. That's right. So it's a big party today. It's a very big party. When we come back, Jeannie and Yanez visit the local craft market, then shop for seafood, picking out their lunch with the help of the hotel's head chef. Yanez and I are suckers for a good market. Um, he actually shops just as much, if not more, than what I do. And yes, the shopping began. <laughs> You found these things. Yes. What are they called? Capoeira. Yes, capulanas. So capulanas. Different colors here and different types. Okay. Okay, I love them because I love the bright colors. Where does the tradition for capulanas come from? Capulanas are very important in Mozambique culture, special for traditional ceremonies. When you have a ceremony, uh, women's normal they earn capulanas, and also when bo babies uh, is born. Also, we put them in the capulanas as well. And traditional dancing as well, we use in capulanas. The capulana is a two meter piece of fabric which gets wrapped around the body and then tied loosely. And it's used for wraps, rugs, baby carrying, fashion, and they're absolutely gorgeous. What does it mean if you wear a shorter? That means uh, you can go to the beach with this. You can go for, to dance as well on the, um, the parties. And especially the young uh, generation, they were like this because the boys like, you see, it's really more tropical, you see. So the boys like this because you can see the girls' knees. Especially in summer times, in summer times you can wear like this. It's really fantastic. Well, this is fantastic. I'm definitely yeah. going to take this one. I like this one. Life. Okay. Yeah, it looks good. Jean, Hello. That's beautiful, by the way. You know how you always say to me, I never buy you expensive jewelry, uh, diamonds, gold? Ever. So now we're in Mozambique. Capulanas are the, the in thing. You know they make beautiful jewelry from capulanas. 
So I got you something really pricey, <laughs> starting with an Alice band. <laughs> an Alice band? <laughs> Who still wears Alice bands? <laughs> Do I look like Alice in Wonderland to you? And that's a real sign of love. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I like that. that. Oh, oh, that cute. is fantastic. I mean, the bracelets was fantastic. That was really nice. But the, the Alice band? Come on, it is. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, the fish market is truly something to see. A feast for the eyes and for your tummy. Welcome to Maputo's main fish market. Now it is mayhem here. It really is an overload for the senses. There's music, there's hustle and bustle, there's people, and it really smells like seafood. <laughs> now today we've got Antonio, who's the main chef at the Polano Hotel. We're gonna be making some typical Mozambican food. What, what type of fish are we looking for? We are looking for the red snapper and the tiger prawns. As you can see, there is a lot of fish here. We have got red snapper, kingfish, grouper, a lot of it. Everything was fresh. There were these funny little things that they were spraying out and there were fish I'd never seen before and, and red snappers and then the Lorenzo Mark prawns. I mean, you, they're, they're just everywhere. Batar. Batar, batar. Well, this is the prawn that we are going to buy. This is called a uh, king prawn, as you can see it. Very fresh, yeah. So, we are going to order only one kilo. Perfect. And the lady, she's selling it by uh, 500 meticaj a kilo. So, we will buy it. These are really so good that... One kilo is just enough for me. What are you getting? <laughs> wow. Well, well, well. This is the fish that we are going to buy that is called the red snapper. Red snapper. Yes, we're going to choose this one. But here, as you can see, the fish is still fresh. If the eye is becoming red, it means that the fish is not, is not fresh. But as you can see, the eye is white. And the fish, you can see it, is not smelling very clean. You can just buy this one. But here, they sell by kilos. We have to know how many kilos does this one weigh. Two point one six kilograms. Two point one six kilograms. Uh, Five hundred. Five hundred and forty. It's the same as the prawns. It's perfect. Yeah. We'll take it. The colours in that market. If, if you look at the seafood in in, in, in Mozambique, it's the colours are so much richer. The crabs are so huge, and their pincers are so big. Everything is just bigger and better. Next week on Top Travel, Jeannie and Yanez continue to explore magical Mozambique, enjoying a stay at a luxury beach resort on the white, sandy shore of Ponta Mamoli. They dine on sumptuous seafood and make the most of the warm water with a bodyboarding session and even help out at a nearby school. Later, Yanez enjoys a guided scuba dive around the coral reef before departing for an island break on sunny Bazaruto.